Hi, in this lecture we are going to see one of the coolest developments in the history of algorithms, the birth of fast algorithms for multiplication. We have all studied multiplication and addition, and multiplication seems harder than addition, but is it? Is multiplication harder than addition? This question was asked in, uh, already back in the 1960s, and amazingly, we still don't know. Let us go back to addition for a second to set up the context. So here the inputs are two n-digit integers, a and b, in base w, okay? We are going to be very interested in changing bases, so now uh, we're going to call bases w. So typically we work in base 10, uh, computers uh, work in base 2. And the output that you want is one integer, c, which is the sum, a plus b. Which type of operation do we allow? Um, well, we are only going to allow operation on digits. This is going to make sense because we're going to look at very long numbers. Well, the simple way to add takes how many operations? Well, it just takes uh, a linear amount of operation, order of n. Is that optimal? Yes, that's optimal because uh, you have at least to write down the output element C, which has length at least n. Okay, so for addition, we know algorithms uh, which are optimal up to constant factors. You can add in linear time and that's optimal. What about multiplication? Here, again, the input are two n-digit integers, a and b, in some base, w. Think, for example, w2 or 10. And the output is one integer, c, which is a times b. Again, we only allow operations on digits. We have all studied a simple way, a simple algorithm to multiply numbers. If I want to perform this multiplication here, I can do a table like this, okay? The first row in this table is the first number that I'm multiplying times the first digit of the second number. Then I, then I have the first number times the second digit, and so on. Each time you shift by one, and then you sum these things. How long does this thing take? Well, we can observe that just writing down this table takes quadratic time, okay? If you have n digits here, each of these things will have at least n digits, okay? And you may have n rows. So just this, just this thing takes quadratic time. The simple way, hence, takes at least n squared time. Now, can we multiply integers any faster? And let's pause a second uh, to make a historical remark. Can we multiply faster than n square? Well, the feeling uh, was that, uh, quote, as regards to number systems and calculation techniques, uh, it seems that the final and best solutions were found in science long ago. In other words, Hey, look, Babylonians and Egyptians uh, have been multiplying numbers uh, for millennia. If there was a faster way, a better way to multiply, we would have found it b by now. And this was the feeling uh, around 1950s, uh, and in particular, uh, in 1950s, um, Kolmogorov, a brilliant uh, mathematician, conjectured that uh, omega of n square is a lower bound on the running time for multiplication, so you cannot multiply faster than s square. Amazingly, one week later that this conjecture was posed, Karatsuba found a much faster algorithm, running time n to the 1.59, okay? And you can read a compelling account of this discovery in his survey, The Complexity of Computations. And Karatsuba, um, you know, can be seen as the birth of, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, the renaissance of uh, uh, divide and conquer algorithms uh, in uh, uh, algorithms. Let us see what is the basic example behind Karatsuba. 
Let us consider a, a simple example now. This is not the, the, the full-blown algorithm. Let's assume that you want to multiply two digit numbers, n1 and n2, in some base w, okay? These numbers just have two digits, so I can write n1 as a0 plus a1 times w, okay? And similarly, I can write n2 as b0 plus b1 times w. Okay. So, for example, in the familiar uh, basis, 10, you can write 27 as 7 plus 2 times 10. Okay. So here w is 10 corresponding to this factor here. Okay. But here we are working with a different base which uh, uh, for this example, you should think of it being very large, something like W being uh, uh, 2 to the 32 or more. Okay, so we want to multiply these two numbers. We want to compute the P, which is N1 times N2. Okay, and if you write down what happens here, you get this, okay, you get A0 times B0 from multiplying these two things. Then you have an A1, B1, W square for multiplying these two things. And then you have the cross products here, which is A0, B1 here, and A1, B0 here. They multiply W, okay? And we can write this as P0 plus P1, W, where P1 is this, plus P2, W, where P2 is this. So our goal now is to compute the P0, P1, and P2, okay? So our input is A0, A1, B0, and B1, and we want to compute P0, P1, and P2. Okay, well, how many multiplications do we need for this? Well, just staring at it, you can do it with four multiplications, right? There is one multiplication here, one multiplication here, one multiplication here, and one multiplication here. This is four. Now, can we save on multiplications, possibly increasing additions? Is four the least number of multiplication that we can use to multiply n1 and n2? And here is really all that's behind the, the Karatsuba, Karatsuba algorithm. The answer is that uh, yes, so we can save on multiplications with a cleverer way. Here is the way. Recall that we are trying to compute this. Okay. We want to compute P, we want to compute the numbers P0, P1, and P2. Okay. We, are not, we are not going to perform these multiplications directly. Instead, we're going to do the following thing. We are going to compute Q0, which is A0, B0. This is exactly the uh, P0, the first uh, multiplication in the natural order. Then we are going to compute uh, Q1, which is a strange number. Q1 does not correspond uh, to anything which we want, but it will be useful later. Q1 is A0 plus A1 quantity times B1 plus B0, okay? And then we're going to compute Q2, which is A1, B1, which is equal to P2, the last multiplication that we need. And now we make the following critical observation that the P0 that we want is, as we said, Q0. The P2 that we want is, uh, as we said, Q2. And the P1 that we want can be obtained as a Q1 minus Q0 minus Q2. Brilliant. We are saving one multiplication at the cost of increasing the number of additions. But that's good because addition is extremely cheap. This is the basic idea. And Karatsuba just does this recursively. So let us now see the Karatsuba algorithm. Now we have two n-digit integers, a and b, in base w. And we want to compute the integer c, which is a times b. Okay, so we are going to do divide and conquer. So first we're going to divide, and the way in which we divide, it gives us follows. We are going to think of the numbers, actually, 
in uh, um, a very large base and consistence of just two digits, A0 and A1. Okay, so we're going to pick M to be N over two. Okay, and we're going to write A as A0 plus A1 W to the M and B as B0 plus B1 W to the M. And now this looks very familiar to what we were doing before. Our goal is to compute A times B, which now corresponds to P0 plus P1 W to the M plus P2 W to the 2M, okay? Just like before. So we will do the same trick. We're going to conquer. We're going to perform the multiplication that we saw before. Q0 will be A0 times B0. Now A0 and B0 are numbers with N over two digits. Okay, I want to multiply them. So I'm going to recursively call the Karatsuba algorithm on them. Similarly, I'm going to call the Karatsuba algorithm recursively on Q1 to obtain A0 plus A1 times B1 plus B0, and same for Q2. Okay. And now I need to combine these solutions as we saw earlier. So the combined step is uh, uh, P0 is given by Q0, P1 is Q1 minus Q0 minus Q2, and P2 is just Q2. And that's the description of the, of the algorithm. Now we have to analyze the running time. Let's call it TN the number of operations. And we see from the algorithm that to multiply two integers of n digits, we reduce to multiplying, uh, um, to performing three multiplications between uh, integers with n over two digits, plus there is a bunch of additions which cost linear time, order of n. Okay. So this three comes from the fact that we just use the three multiplications, okay? If we use the four, as in the naive uh, way, we will have a four here and this, this regression will be much larger. But now let's see how much this is. So how do we solve this recurrence? We're going to do a recursion three. So here is a, we're going to do a recursion three. Here is the recursion three, and we are going to write CN for a fixed constant C for the value order of N for simplicity. So at the top level, you have a CN, the cost to add the N digit integers. And then at the second level, you're working with integers with uh, um, n over two digits, okay? And you call the algorithm at three times. So you have a branching factor of three, you have cn over two three times. So on this level, the cost would be cn times three halves. Then again, each of these things uh, is split up in, in three and the number of digits goes down by half. Okay. So on this level, you have integers with uh, n over four digits, and the number of subproblems here, the number of recursive calls is nine, three times three. So the cost here is cn times three halves square, and so on. So in general, uh, the cost at level i is cn times three halves to the i. Now, how many levels do we have? Well, each time we divide the number of uh, digits by half, so the number of levels is log base two of n. So the total cost of this recursion tree is the sum of cn three halves to the i for i that goes from zero to log base two of n. Okay, we need to know how much this sum is. Now, this is a geometric sum, so the largest term dominates. So this whole thing is just a big O of n times three halves raised to log base two of n. 
Okay, so I've just picked the largest term, which is the one for i equal to log base 2 of n, and this dominates the sum. Okay, so now this uh, 2 raised to log base 2 of n is just a factor of n, which is going to cancel out with this, and all I'm left with is a 3 raised to log base 2 of n, which is the same thing as n to log base 2 of 3. So this recursion resolves to n to the log base 2 of 3. This, in, this is big O, as we just saw. In fact, it can even be shown to be a big omega. So this thing is tight. And numerically, log base 2 of 3 is, is about 1.59. Okay? And this is a very big saving from the n squared algorithm. Now, it's not extremely common that you have to multiply to very, very long numbers, although there are, there are applications which uh, need it, but uh, uh, not the full-blown recursive algorithm, but the, the basic idea in Karatsuba of saving uh, um, one multiplication uh, when multiplying to these numbers is extremely widely used. Uh, so, for example, in... Uh, um, uh, your computers uh, it may be used to, say, uh, reduce the multiplication of 128-bit integers to 64-bit integers. Okay. Are there faster algorithms for uh, multiplication? Um, so after this birth, there has been uh, uh, many other algorithms. Uh, there has been many exciting uh, developments. Um, Essentially, we know algorithms which take uh, order of n log n time, so essentially linear. Uh, the two, two important breakthroughs are the 1971 Schoen Age and Strassen algorithm, which runs in time order of n log n log log n. Okay, so it's order of n log n times a factor of log log n. And this factor of log log n was uh, further shaved off uh, by Führer. Um, quite recently, actually, where it gets n log n times a strange quantity, which is x log star n, um, where log star n is the, the number of times you need to apply log to n to make it 1. Okay, it's not very important now what this thing is, but it's extremely slow-growing function, which is uh, grows uh, uh, less fast than this. And all these things uh, are based on a general technique, which is the, the fast Fourier transform. And that's it for now.